I know. Hi everyone, I'm here at Al Bustan Hotel with my friend Fadi Jambar, who I wanted to introduce all of you to. Um, Fadi is a baritone and he joined me in my recital last Wednesday when we opened the uh, Bustan Festival last Wednesday with Maestro Gianluca Marciano at the piano. Fadi joined me for a very special duet by Wadi Sabra. For those of you who don't know who that is, he is uh, the man who composed our Lebanese national anthem. Now Fadi has been, has taken on a, a whole, you've been on an adventure. Yes. Of discovering so many works by Wadi Sabra that we didn't know existed, we didn't know were still around. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes with Fadi. Tell us. Tell us so, everything. What the whole happened? Story, the whole story. He is Mr. Wadia Sabra, the, the guy who composed the Lebanese anthem. Right. But we all only remember him for that. But he's more than that. He's actually the first Lebanese to go to the Paris Conservatoire, Conservatoire de Paris, and to study in 1894. And so he stayed there, he lived for 15 years, and he came back and he actually opened a music school that later on became the actual Lebanese National Conservatory. Fantastic. And he's the first guy to import classical music. So if we have classical music in Lebanon, it's thanks to him. He, com he composed the first three operas of the history of Lebanon and the first opera in Arabic. So in Arabic language, but composed in a classical way. Right. Yeah. We had and the pleasure of singing exactly. one of his duets the other night, which was really fascinating because it sounded like classical music as we know it, exactly. but it had a little bit of an Arabic flair and, and interesting rhythms and Modes colors. Modes and yeah. colors. Yeah. So he's the, he's the first guy to try to do this mix between piano works and orchestra works and vocal works of the East and West, mm -hmm. Oriental modes combined and fit into classic for classical ear for mm -hmm. like westernized classical mm -hmm. ear right. so he's and actually the first guy to transcribe actual famous um, oriental tunes into writing so how how did this come about because this was not something that you ever imagined you'd be doing no so tell us a bit of how you got onto this path which is a very unique it, it feels like you were chosen it's for a calling this. i was chosen and then i also remember, i feel like it's like a hollywood movie i really feel like and then i felt myself diving into like some vortex that like took me in yeah. to this huge hercule poirot like research indiana right. jones excavating into <laughs> our past this guy is our genesis he he made it possible for us to become who we are today here as mm. classical musicians in lebanon in mm -hmm. the middle east right. and right. the whole story is he died in 1952, and after his death, as everywhere else in a lot of the countries, there are family feuds. His family feud made it that his wife hid everything in 1958. And ever since, everybody has been, were, has been looking for the archives, right. and nobody knew where they were, even his adoptive daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, who was one of his singers. I mean, she sang stuff She for, sang his music. She sang his music right. he composed for her at, right. at a later stage. Okay. And uh, she was she had she had become a very famous voice teacher, mm -hmm. and then she was teaching a little bit of the stuff he, she had kept. Yeah. But then nothing of the big things. So and until until 2016, where the actual archives, who uh, who were hidden by his wife's family, mm -hmm. were given back to Le Centre du Patrimoine Musical Libanais mm -hmm. to Mrs. Zena Saleh Kayali, who mm -hmm. was the head of the center, mm -hmm. and uh, she was like completely all over the world and then it took her two years to discover this huge and so it was hidden in a huge blue trunk like the ones that you ship yes things in yes yeah. all his archives were there he was amazing because he was like he had like a premonition he kept everything letters photos pictures uh, all his music all his uh, notes everything 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 and his wife kept everything so pictures. this is how you were able to puzzle yes. the history together the, the uh the historical performances, the, the, everything. the premieres. Everything, he left brochures, he left photos, reviews, he left reviews like that. everything. And so f it was through the discovering of this time huge box. Time, time box, time box, time box yes. that you were able to just start piecing together the history and coming up with. with the, even those caricatures date from 1930. 
Who did these? Rafat Buhairi, a very famous caricaturist back then, and I found his son. And this is Wadia? This is Wadia Sabra, and this is Wadia Sabra on the piano. Incredible. So I found Incredible. those, and as soon as I found them, I was like, okay. So tell us about this. You so, went through all of the manuscripts. So the, the whole story about this the edition and the book is like, okay, we all know that he did operas, and he did piano works, and yeah. stuff like that, but nobody knew anything. So when Zena Kayali, she like, in... In 2019, she said, okay, why don't you go and see whatever you can find for a baritone and sing? Yeah. And in came, I don't know, we know we had like a huge, like a big revolution in Lebanon in, in October. Have you 19, heard about that? They heard about the big revolution in uh, October 19, uh, uh, October 2019. Mm -hmm. Then came in Corona. So I was like, here I am sitting at home doing nothing. Blocking and like, okay, let me research. What an incredible COVID so, project. A big COVID project, big like lockdown project. So the center finance me, I found finance because it, like I, this this is a teamwork. This is, I, I had to manage a teamwork and it's, I really thank you for my team who helped me out with me. My, it always takes a village. It takes a village and it's important <laughs> to always uh, thank those people because it takes two to tango as we say. And so I found uh, collaborators to help me. Mm -hmm. uh, engravers, a very good engraver, my very true friend Tony Jmeyer, a very good composer. He's really, he was, he By was, engraver, you mean? It's somebody who's like transcriber. a transcriber. Transcriber, okay. engraver. Yeah, somebody who like uh, transcribes it on on computer with right. me, and yes. then I had to find people who would help us correct mm -hmm. the revisions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I was doing all the research. Yeah. I was visualizing, masterminding the whole project, knowing exactly what I want. Everything was handwritten, okay. so we had to computerize and digitalize, scan, go to the center, research, read all the archives, understand the big puzzle. Then. I had to question all those people, the the remaining few oldies. What is it? What? What? Why? Where? Who still is alive? That knew and him. That knew worked with him. Could or, give us, or was around. Or the daughter and the son of some singer Amazing. or some musician Amazing. teacher. Amazing. Then contacting Turkey because he was in Turkey. Contacting his family Incredible. was in France and whatever. I mean, and, and uh, all over and all over the world because he he traveled a lot and yeah. like wherever I can find like a bit of piece of information. So I found a lot in France. Mm. I was like, really like, and the information was coming. And one thing leading to another one, just cleaning out arias for me to sing. And it so happens that he composed for my voice. It's like a hundred years ago, well, he goes, go. that's for your voice. There you go, that, that's the gift. Yeah, yeah, and the piano and the piano gone off. So, so he, he wrote three operas. Yeah. So I had to know where and what and how. Mm -hmm. I mean, the history, the context. I mean, why the story? Mm -hmm. Where was it made? Who's mm -hmm. this person who mm -hmm. wrote the story? Because this could lead me to something, and this actually led me to a lot of stuff. So what's in here now? So in this pr first book, this is the first initial book, when what started with just Aries for me, I said, okay, well, this Aries for the girl, this mm -hmm. Aries for the choir, this, oh, this is the overtures that are good. So for excerpts of his two French operas. Great. Uh, Les Bergers de Canon, composed in 1917, 1918. All in French. All in French. And uh, Les Migres, which is this, the first operetta, composed in 1930-31. Okay. And knowing that this Le Berger de Canal was first composed in Ottoman, Turkish, then translated into French. Incredible. And I found the person who translated her own daughter and everything, and I've been granddaughter oh and stuff gosh. like that. And tell us about this. And Vapies this. Pour piano. So, Vapies pour Piano, this is actually, so since, since we were sitting, and I go, so I said myself, and I said to my friend Tony, Tony, let's enjoy time, and let's, oh, let's do this, and let's do that. And so I found, it started with, this book started with three waltz, waltzes. Sabra composed three waltzes. Mm. Vals de concert, mm -hmm. vals oriental, mm -hmm. and vals caprice. Mm. But then since we're sitting cool. and doing nothing, well, let's do more. And then came out 20 pièces pour piano. Wow. Uh, of his best compositions, dating from 1906 mm -hmm. to 1933. Wow. Like this is really the genesis of classical writing in Lebanon. Yeah, incredible. And we, we, oh, this is our heritage. And it was like a homage, a tribute, and we owe this respect of this is how we started. Absolutely. And we should always, uh, this is like a museum piece. Of course, later on people came and started composing even more elaborated, but he sure. was composing, you have to know like in his operas, the choir pieces, there were very little uh, harmony. It was little, a lot of unison, because mm -hmm. back then you're talking at the beginning of uh, uh, polyphonic music. It was very strange for mm -hmm. people here. Yeah. So he was, com so, Incredible. yeah, he was Incredible. composing for whatever he had back then, even mm -hmm. in the opera arias. He didn't go very high in the notes. Mm -hmm. He went up to G uh, for most of the singers. So if, if musicians want to get their hands on this, yes. how can they go about doing it? Find that? me through Instagram, so Facebook, any kind You'll of social I'll media. tag him. Yes, tag, tag me, Fadi jean Contact Fadi. And he has a page, Wadia Sabra has a page on Facebook. I created, I became right. his advocate. I'm, and people tell me that I'm his reincarnation. 
They, well, they, his family called me with Dion now. They, <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet. Because I became very friends with that's his family. That's so sweet. Tell us about so, this. So, about so this. Uh, every year on Independence Day, which is uh, in November, uh, the post office, Liban Post, they, they do something for the independence. Mm -hmm. So this year, so happens that the post girl, people wanted to do something about the national anthem. So Isn't that a Just when you were working... On this, yeah, and they weren't linked. They just they weren't linked. It's it's, it's like that. Incredible. So the books. <sighs> Nothing signed, happens by accident. I know. I signed That's the so books. Uh, end of uh, August, mm. and then uh, in uh, uh, October, in October, I was contacted by the Liban Post guy, who so happens to be friends with one of the uh, descendants of Wadia Samra of his wife, of and course. she put me in contact, and they were they they wanted pictures and information because they wanted to do a special folder plus the stamp. Okay. So, uh, and this, is it. this is the folder. I gave them the info and the picture. This is the actual, this is the actual flag of how it was printed on the actual Lebanese anthem when it was sold back then for people to buy. Yeah, so this is 100 years old. Oh, that's incredible. Though they scanned it and everything. So inside you have the stamp marked with the first day. Which so is, this is this. This is that's the stamp. the stamp here. We're going to close <clears throat> up and show you. The Wadiya Sabra stamp with him like posing like the Roda thinker. Le penseur de Rodin, with this signature. So I gave them all the info. Wonderful. So they they were able to do the stamps both close. Those the, the other guy is the guy who wrote the, the lyrics the of lyrics. the the lyrics. Nashid So uh, great. Yeah. So this is what happened. Thank this is you. my uh, latest news and the latest Lebanese news, of course. Uh, it was a, a pleasure singing this duet that hasn't been sung for ages. And, yeah, it's, it's a real privilege. Yes. Real, real privilege. And we we have. Um, we have the responsibility to to educate people, the Lebanese it's people, and it's it's just so wonderful that you've that you've been able to to do all this and that you do it with such passion and such dedication and it's a calling. so much detail. Well, oh. it is a calling. It yes. is a calling, and I can't imagine anyone else other than you doing this oh with God. your your detail oriented mind. And yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, so and actually, the duet what we did together is like uh, reenacting history. Yeah. Because the last time it was sung in front of Wadiya Sabra in 1950 was in this configuration, soprano and baritone. Incredible. Yeah. Well, here we are. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for Thank you. taking the time. Thank you. And uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned for more. More There's to come. There's going to be a lot more, yes. more music to come, music to come, more information, perhaps a book, a historical book. Two old oh, two books. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.